One of the cool features of Painter is that they have physically based physically based particle systems for some of the different tools they have. One being the painting tool, another one being the erasing tool, and then we have the projection tool. This is a bit gimmicky and a bit useful. It's one of these you're not going to be living your life using this tool, but it's it's also quite handy in certain situations. Though I would love to see an entire project just painted with uh, particle brushes. Awesome. <laughs> This is what this is what happens when you're using it with one of these presets. You can find a bunch of presets under particles under the shelf. This is it's a completely different way of painting compared to normal painting because this is not based on curvature maps or based on on anything of that and inclusion. This is just based on where the particles go. So this is this is one of these ways I think is going to have a huge impact in the future as stuff becomes more particle friendly. Right now it's as you can see it's a bit gimmicky, but uh I think you can do some really cool things with this, just because it's it's actually particle based and not based on on just maps. So there are a bunch of cool different presets here you can try out, like broken glass. Yeah, if you want that smashed face look <laughs> for blo broken glass. Yeah, exactly. You have burning. So you can see they're all they're all fairly similar in the way they're working. They originate from some somewhere, or they uh, they go up or down. But it's all based on particles. It's pretty cool as well. You can just fill in a huge area with particles. And it just continues until the particle die. Fracturing. Let's do another layer. So if you want some quick fa fracturing in what it is you're doing, mm. just add something like this, and this would take ages to paint by hand. Laser impact. This is where I find it to be a bit ha actually handy, though, and not just, I mean, Laser impact. It's cool, but it's not <laughs> it's not really practical. But leaks, I actually find this to be quite useful. This is where you can you can paint it around different parts of uh, your model, and the particles is going to give you our, an approximation of how, how how the leaks would, would go in real life, like how the water would go down. Because it actually follows gravity for this. Yes, yeah, so if you don't have any um, any sort of grunt maps or anything like that on hand that, that match what you, you need. This kind of stuff could be cool, especially for around edges. Stuff yeah, exactly. Like that. And then you can use you can use this as a basis as well, and you can just modulate this with grunge maps. Mm. We can also look a bit later on in using filters, where we can use a warp filter to really just break this up a little. We have this guy as well, league heavy. Yeah, so there there are some different use cases for these particles, not. Not numerous at the moment, no. uh, like organic something. <laughs> but, you know, for some things, they could definitely produce some really cool results. And it's definitely worth experimenting with. What I actually really like is also the rain ones, the rain and sandstorm. Because this just goes from the top and just just kind of streaks down where it would streak down. Now, you've got to keep doing this for a few times or, you know, you need to use a really big brush size. Yeah. But it's still pretty cool. The brush size also impacts how big the particles are. So and what about uh, in terms of settings for these kinds of brushes? Yeah, so we have settings under under the properties panel, like with all the other ones. We don't have a whole lot of settings, to be honest. And they're not very well documented at all. But you can see here you have something like a particle life. We have gravity direction. So if you want to put these in different, uh, just through different uh, gravities, go up or down. Yeah, or if you wanted them to streak for, you know, a full minute before they yeah. start to disappear so you get these really long streaks you could edit it in there yeah. but it, do, it does give you some uh customize customizability with the with the brushes so you can at least try to tweak them for for what you need yeah exactly lizard veins as well because this is this is where you can do some really cool stuff when it comes to the organic parts of it yeah this chapter is more just to show you that they exist they're they're here <laughs> Just because you need to know all the all the features are here. One thing which is actually pretty cool is that I've already prepped a little thing here. We have um, we have a rust material, and then we have a cobalt material. So we can now just under this we can add a paint layer, and now we can use something like leaks, and now we can just paint some leaks where you want to be. And now this is in no way like it's physically based, but at least you can get some leaks which can actually kind of work. You can use, again, use it as a starting point for something more physically correct. I think this is just, just really cool when you're just seeing like 
I'm just seeing it pop out of nowhere like this. Henning's been playing with this for <laughs> I, I don't even I don't even know how many hours now. I'm working on sitting working. It's, I've just been playing with particles. <laughs> Yeah, so pretty cool stuff. Mm -hmm. Not the most practical stuff in the world. Like we're not talking like fill layer practicals. Uh, we're not talking uh, clone brush practicals. But we're no. talking like like five percent practical. Five percent practical. <laughs> Still useful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's the, the those are the particle brushes. Have fun with the presets and just just play around with them and just see if you can use them for something interesting. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they're gonna keep pushing these this further in further updates of, of Painter because it's a really it's a really fun idea. Mm. 